Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. In September 1966, NASA launched the Surveyor 2 mission to the Moon. This was intended to be a soft lander on the Moon. However, a failure during a mid-course correction resulted in the spacecraft tumbling out of control and slamming into the Moon near Copernicus Crater. Although the lander slammed into the Moon and is no more, the upper stage of the Atlas rocket, the Centaur upper stage, continued past the Moon into solar orbit. Now, over 50 years later, it has come back around the Sun and has temporarily been captured by Earth's gravity, completing two orbits before it is now headed back out away from Earth to return to solar orbit. As the Centaur upper stage approached Earth last year, astronomers discovered it and labeled it 2020 SO, a systematic designation signifying the year, the portion of the year, and the sequence in which the object was discovered. They quickly realized that the orbit was very similar to Earth's orbit, and was consistent with an object departing from Earth in September 1966. Further analysis of the spectrum of the object revealed that it was also consistent with a centaur upper stage that had been in space for about 60 years. You see, there are plenty of other centaur upper stages still left in Earth orbit that are available for analysis and comparison. Here's a video of an old centaur upper stage that I filmed with my own telescope a few years ago. As the upper stage approached its second perigee, the point in its orbit closest to Earth, I took these images with T11 on the iTelescope network. T11 is a large telescope located in New Mexico, and each frame of this time-lapse animation is one minute long, bent 2x2 two two for increased sensitivity. I simultaneously also took a few images with T24 in California, another large telescope, in order to use parallax to directly measure the distance. I used two images taken simultaneously, one in New Mexico, one in California, and used astrometry to measure the parallax angle between them, which came out to about 0.231 degrees, as you can see here. If we take the latitude and longitude of the telescopes, and we take the equatorial coordinates of the upper stage as seen from those telescopes, we can do a bit of math and actually calculate the distance to the upper stage using parallax. If we take the latitude and longitude, we find a core distance of about 1,344 kilometers. And if we take the altitude and azimuth, which can be converted from the equatorial coordinates in the previous slide, and we factor in the small amount of horizon dip between those two locations, we find that there was about 76.9 degrees between the center upper stage and the T24 telescope as seen from the T11 telescope. This allows us to use the law of sines to actually calculate the distance. So if we take the core distance divided by the sine of the parallax, which as I mentioned was about 0.231 degrees, times the sine of the angular separation between the upper stage and the other telescope, we find that the upper stage had a distance of about 324,596 kilometers, which is within 97.5% of the actual distance according to JPL. Not bad. On February 1st, I once again used T24 in California to collect a few more one minute long exposures of 2020 SO as it approached perigee. The streak was a little bit longer and it was moving a little bit faster through the field of view because it was approaching Earth and it was accelerating. These additional images allowed me to collect enough astrometric data to approximately solve for the orbit of 2020 SO and render its orbit in a solar system integrator. I used Rebound in Python to write an in-body simulation that accounts for the gravity of the planets and even the moon on the upper stage of the rocket. The simulation starts on November 1st, 2020. The red dot represents the upper stage centaur, the blue dot represents Earth, and the green dot represents the Moon. The spacing between them is to scale, but of course the sizes of the dots are not to scale. You can see that the upper stage approaches Earth very closely, and then goes into its temporary unstable orbit. It heads out towards Apogee, the furthest point in its orbit relative to Earth, before slowing down and slowly descending back towards Earth for its second perigee, which is about the time that I observed it. Eventually, after the second perigee, the perturbations on its orbit primarily caused by lunar gravity kick it away from Earth and allow it to escape Earth's gravity. It will now return to a solar orbit, and it won't be back by Earth anytime soon. This is actually not the first time that an upper stage rocket has returned from solar orbit decades after it was launched. In 2002, an amateur astronomer discovered what turned out to be the Apollo 12 upper stage, which came back by Earth and temporarily orbited our planet once again until about 2003. 
maybe one day in the distant future when space travel is more routine, we'll actually be able to start to capture some of these artifacts and bring them back to be put on display. I think that would be really cool to do with something like an Apollo 12 upper stage, or perhaps Snoopy, the ascent module from Apollo 10, which was also ejected into a solar orbit and is still somewhere out there to this day. Until next time, thanks for watching. Clear skies, folks.